Well, hello, friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome to my deck. It's another sun-filled Saturday. I just can't get enough of this uh, weather we've been having. Sure, there's still snow on the ground up here and and uh, and some kind of essential cold air, but the sun has so much heat. Anyways, it's a whiskey review, and today I want to talk about a Canadian single malt. So it is a Canadian whiskey, but it is very different than the last whiskey I talked to you about because it is a single malt. Today I want to talk about two brewers, single malt. This is number 12, part of the Peated series. <music> Well, thanks for staying with me through that short opener. As I, I was uh, almost distracted in saying, it's gorgeous out here. It's just beautiful. Uh, so thankful to have a deck like this that can bring in the sunshine, can enjoy a coffee, or in this case, have a dram and talk to you about whiskey. Uh, today, I want to talk about two brewers. Two brewers, uh, you know, and I had the privilege of interviewing Bob. Bob and Alan were the two who started a brewery, boy, a while back, 97-ish kind of thing in the Yukon. Uh, and they uh, did very well with their beer. And then I think around 2009, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, they decided, oh, let's get into this distilling. We love what we're doing. Uh, it's going well. Let's, uh, let's try distilling. And that's when uh, Two Brewers Distillery started up. And uh, I think their first release wasn't until somewhere around 2016, I'm going to say. So they, you know, they distilled, they barreled, and they waited. And they tested and waited until they had a, a pretty decent product. And I have a ton of respect for that story. That uh, they didn't just as soon as they could get that three-year release, crack it out. Um, but they were fortunate. They worked hard for it. But, but their context had uh, something going that could bring in some money. And that was their uh, brewery. But back to Two Brewers and this whiskey in front of me. Uh, what I Things that I love about Two Brewers is uh, all of their releases, as far as I know, have no coloring and are not chill filtered. So everything you get, everything you see can be evaluated because you know that all the coloring and, and whatnot came from the casking that they've used. I also know that they have, well, I feel in conversation I've learned they have a wide variety of uh, barrels. They've got ex bourbon. They've got some ex sherry. Um, they've got, of course, reused barrels. They've got some new wood barrels, and and they put a lot of their distillate across a variety of barrels. And then, uh, as I think is a not a good Canadian whiskey, they really look at blending. So uh, you know, it gets to say single malt because this is 100% barley, and single because it's completely from their distillery. But don't think this is single cask. This actually has a variety of casks in it. Um, well, let's talk more about this specifically. That was kind of broad, two brewers, who they are, what they do. Um, so this here is number 12. And it's part of their peated uh, series. Actually, the back was going to remind you very clearly. They've, they've uh, settled into uh, four styles of releases. So they have a classic style. That's an unpeated single malt, you know, peated single malt. Then they've got special finish. That's when uh, they're going to emphasize a unique casking finish. Uh, well, and then innovative, which is also um, some releases that just have some very uh, uh, different finishes. Uh, so anyways, classic, peated, special, and innovative. This is part of peated. Uh, they had, I think, um, three and seven repeated. And then 12 and 19 is peated. So today we're going to talk about 12. I'm going to kind of rate it a little bit. This bottle is still pretty fresh, but I've had it before. So I have some thoughts on 12. Uh, and then I will compare it just briefly to 19. Uh, because I was able to get a, um, uh, a sample through Yukon Dave, the, uh, the uh, brand ambassador in our area of 19. So I thought, you know, why don't I at least share some introductory thoughts? Clearly not enough to give a, you know, a detailed review but uh, certainly enough to give some thoughts. What I know about 12 uh, is it is a, a, a blend of uh, a five-year-old and eight-year-old single malt. Uh, that overall, it's somewhere around 60% of this blend is peated, roughly, right? So that comes from you know barley that's been dried over peat. Uh, also, some of the makeup here 
is X bourbon and some is new wood. Beyond that, I don't know enough about percentages and ratios. I know that the, the core, I would say the heart of this is the five-year-old with maybe like 30% uh, into the, into the eight-year-old. All right, let's see what we get out of the whiskey itself. Let's let the whiskey talk, not John. Ah, it's a lightly fruit, sweet, vanilla. Yeah, um, cut orchard fruit. So we're talking, you know, apple. Crisp apple, it's fairly crisp. A little bit of yellow raisin, maybe, if there's more fruiting in there. At this point, the peat is just a light smoke for me. Not too strong. Doesn't put me off. There's a little bit of um, edge that could be spicing or youth. At this point, it's hard to say. Yeah, that uh, this is released at 43%, as I said, um, not filtered and uh, not colored. Yeah, so the spicing has a little bit of depth to it. So I think the, um, the bite on the nose that I got is more the youth. The spicing is something from their casking. Okay, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. Up front, again, kind of light, a little, a little uh, orchard fruit. Palette, though, had a good burst of flavor, some nice cinnamon, a little bit of clove. Another sip. Peat starts to come out. The peat here is a, an earthy peat for me. Vegetable, more than, well, no, there was some ash right there. It doesn't get, it doesn't have any of that briny, um, hard peat. Uh, hard's not the right word. Medicine, heavy peat that some of the big Isla scotches would have. This is, um, this is less. This is somewhere, uh, maybe a little more. Somewhere in there, not as smoky as that or as ashy, but there's some of that it's kind of smoke and ash. But the um, the malt sugar, the yellow fruit, um, is more lively than Bomar. Yeah, in fact, that's not a bad comparison for me. It would be a uh, more expressive, juicier Bomar. Yeah, finish is um, decent, it's clean, it's a little drying. Um, more of the char and smoke come in the finish. Actually more come now, what was that, the third sip? It's starting to build up, so now I'm getting more, more peat, more earth smoldery um, moss, but also some, some ash, some campfire. In fact, it's moving more in that direction the more I sip it. It, was, it felt uh, younger, uh, malt driven in the nose and first sips. Now the peat is being a bit more expressive, just a bit more, yep, no, this is not um, going to be light. This is earthy, it needs to be considered, it needs to be relaxed with. Uh, you can tell, that's my bias for when I drink a peated dram, I, I like to think about the layers of, of kind of that earthiness that I get in peat. Uh, it's, it's juicy, so it has lots of flavor but still fairly close to simple, light caramel, more vanilla. I know there's supposed to be some new wood in here and maybe I'm getting that with a little bit of spicy nature in the tongue, not in the nose where I was talking about, or in, you know, when I was talking about the spice I identify, light clove, a little bit of cinnamon, that's some spicing, it's gotta be casking or whatnot, but then there's also a little bit of a, a peppery, it's not, not strong, but it's a little bit of bite that I think is coming from more new wood. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. I like it. This is a quality single malt. Proud that it's Canadian. Uh, it's not really fair. Like I need to shoot uh, uh, some comparisons 
in the the standard Canadian kind of um, high sugar, high sweetness style that can compare to Forty Creek that I did recently and give a better balance of, okay, here, I think it might be done better this way or that way. Uh, this is better compared to some uh, American single malts or uh, or some scotch um, because the, the flavor profile really fits toward, you know, obviously it's all barley and this one's peated. Uh, it, it would be very difficult not to compare this with, uh, with scotch as opposed to something like a Forty Creek Canadian whiskey. It's just very different from, from Forty Creek Canadian whiskey. If you like Canadian whiskey, Forty Creek, you may not like this. If you like scotch, I think this is a bottle to try. And I just love their, I love their story. I, I, um, I appreciate that I was able to interview one of them. Uh, they made time for me, so really like what's going on here. You know, uh, for me, this is excellent. I enjoy it. Coats well in the mouth. Lots of flavor. It, it's it's thin on some areas. Um, so I'm going to put it at four stars. I would recommend it. I gladly say, you know, come on over, give it, give it a try. I think this is a, a fantastic and quality product. Um, definitely give it a try. So let's compare it to uh, 19 that's coming out. Actually, I think by the time I shoot this, um, I think 19 is out. I think when they gave this to me, it was coming out, uh, but I think now it is out. So 19, um, uh, it is at 46%. And uh, what I've read about it, and um, Yukon Dave shared a little bit of information, is that it has six and nine year old. Now, the information didn't say this, but since this was five and eight year old and this is six and nine year old, I'm thinking many of the, it shares many of the same barrels. However, I'm told this is more almost 80% peated malt, whereas that was down around 60. So it's released at 46 instead of 43. It has a stronger percentage of peat in it, but its age makeup again is, is sort of, this is six and nine year old uh, single malt. Let's see what we get. This is a much fruitier nose. Could be the stronger alcohol carries it well, but this is uh, apricot uh, pear. So that sweeter pear instead of apple. Juicy sultana. Yeah, some stone fruits. Wow. To me, that was a much fruitier nose. Ah, but there's still some nice, I'm getting a little cinnamon in here now. Yeah, more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So could be that the alcohol is helping carry the nose more, but it is, uh, this nose pulls me in. It's uh, even juicier, more expressive. Uh, boy, stone fruit, apricot edge of pineapple this is a juicier nose absolutely Let's see what it tastes like cheers first part of the palate continues that just explodes this is a juicy flavor malty sweet fruity Oh yeah, um, the 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 palate the the peat is even more uh, moss um, heathery grassy chewier. Um, picking up on my tongue quite nicely. There's still a smoke quality. There's still some char in there. It still sits. This isn't a big Isla peat, um, but there's uh, it is peatier. Love that. It's just a reflex. Smelled my water. So funny. Ah, maybe this isn't a very fair comparison. This is now lighter, a little, a little less expressive.
Heats a little more ash, a little more campfire. Mmm. Okay. So, mmm. Not fair. I have had a sip before today of this. Uh, again, the sample I had was actually a, a, um, a nice sample. I appreciate that. So hard to get an impression on a single pour. But here right now, uh, I, would, I would say the 19 is significantly more expressive. There is uh, more layers to the malt. The peat isn't as smoky, which is strange because it should be a higher peat. Um, but it complements the um, more the higher fruit expression that I'm getting than the 12. Now the 12 I really like, um, but in this sitting I would give the nod to 19. So I'm looking forward to when I can have a bottle and really maybe get into a, an evening of pouring back and forth and trying to find out which I like more. In the moment, I'm liking 19 a little more. I'm I'm liking uh, the um, the burst nature of the nose and and the character and the palate is strong. So good stuff. Well, I'm glad I was able to shoot here on Saturday. I might even shoot again tomorrow if the weather's nice. I'm struggling during the week to find any kind of time to to even enjoy a whiskey, let alone talk to you guys. But uh, but I appreciate um, being able to sit out here and and just share a few thoughts. If you guys in your neighborhood um, have seen two brewers and you like scotch and you haven't tried them, this is, uh, this is a Canadian single malt that I'm happy to get behind and say these guys are doing it right. They are um, small batch and working very hard at creating flavorful drams. Uh, a little youthful, the 12 is a little more youthful than the 19. Well, it makes sense, it, it is. Um, but, but in this case... Uh, they are working very well with their casks. I think their wood management must be on point. And I like it. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I wish you well. My family continues to be good. I hope yours does too. As I've said before, I am so grateful for all the first line people. That includes the medical people that are keeping us well. And includes delivery, truck driver, grocery store worker, Often, uh, you know, we don't do a lot of order takeout, but I see it on social media. Tons of my friends are doing DoorDash or Uber Eats or uh, Skip the Dishes. And a lot of those people are not paid as well as they should be. And yet, in a way, they're exposing themselves. So hats off to you guys. Thank you so much for what you do. And to all of you, I hope you've poured something nice and are enjoying the weekend. Take care.